Hey everyone, thank you for tuning back into another video. I, um, I've made this video several times and I've been reluctant to put it out because it's so important to me, but now that um, the WWE is um, launching this big um, circus, not circuit, or maybe a circus, so this big show, they're putting on this huge 25th anniversary show and um, lots is coming out in the news, the Royal Rumble. WrestleMania is all happening, and um, everybody's starting to buzz about um, who's going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, and um, I I know that for years and years, every single year it seems, someone is saying, China needs to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. It happened before, before 2015, 2016 when she died, 2017, we're saying it again. And um, I wanted to get this video out there to put my two cents in. And um, I've already made a China video on my YouTube channel before um, about her being inducted when she was campaigning for it before she died last year, and which would have made it 2015 when I started the channel. And now I know um, a lot more people in the entertainment business, and I know... Um, I met some. I made some really good connections at China's funeral, and um, it was, which was, I mean, I am so grateful to have been there. And um, but uh, it, it was more a memorial to say. But um, for, I mean, from that and my connect, like people are saying that this is going to be, this might be the year that they're they're really the, the we're thinking China is going to be inducted this year, which is just, I mean. I stand by the fact that China does not need to be inducted. Um, if they don't want to induct her, she made it clear how much she, how important it was to her. It didn't happen within her lifetime. And I feel like it's always going to be an honor. And I'm happy that they will do it. But it's not, it's not necessary for her to get any type of validation. Because it's, I mean, it's almost like Madonna does not have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Believe it or not. Um, so that's Madonna's choice, which is a little different, but it's, it's just going to say that you don't need, you don't need to be in the rock and roll hall of fame to be like a rock star, you know, and to have like an amazing career. The only reason people are so disappointed is because she made, it would be like, it, it's, it's one, it's that high, you know, it's like, it's being, it's like, um, um, uh, I almost said Rob Zombie, but it's almost like being like Ozzy Osbourne, not being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She is that. She, their women wrestling is not only redefined because of her. She represents every woman. Like she just represents the woman's struggle and and sports entertain. She is she is the person, and um, she's the most famous female wrestler to ever exist up until this date. November 27th, 29th, way off, November 29th, 2017, I'm saying that, and it's every, people who are watching this video know it's true, you think of a woman wrestler, she's like, if one comes to mind, she's the only one that comes to mind, um, if you know wrestling, you might know a few other really big wrestlers. Um, I can't think of anyone who knows nothing about sports entertainment or wrestling or anything and can think of a female wrestler. I mean, it just, like, it doesn't exist like it does now. I mean, I have been checked out of wrestling for, like, a long time now. Um, damn near 10 years, I would say. But, um, but I still don't hear it being untrue I haven't seen being even being checked out makes me even more qualified to say no one exists because no other few I can think of men wrestlers like that come out of sports entertainment and or uh, WWE and that create a name or that are creating for a name for themselves and seeing the buzz on the internet just from being on E or E or um, VH1 or like these other platforms like where you get more mainstream no female is like done it Okay, I take that back. Maybe the Bella sisters. I don't even know if that's their name. The one, there's one that there's the twins. They've kind of gone a bit mainstream. Um, now, this video is about China, though. Um, first of all, like China changed. I wouldn't say she changed my life. I would say that China was part of my life 
for so long. And um, she is an inspiring person. And she, um, she was an amazing woman. And I am so grateful that I got to meet her before she died. And um, I want to share with you in this video, now that I'm five minutes in, I might as well share like what my point of this whole thing is. It's to acknowledge China's presence throughout my entire life. Um, my relationship with China, meeting China, and um, China currently. So, um, so I'll start with um, when I first, I, when I wasn't even into wrestling, um, I found out who China was by playing video games and my brothers, they were into it. And then I saw her on TV and I was so intrigued. I was like, I feel like gay people tend to veer towards liking female wrestlers. And um, she was like, she was like the, she was like the wrestler. Like, oh my God, I'm like, I felt so compelled to understand the storyline of what's going on with her and if it's real because whatever they I was like who is this and you know you look at her especially early on in her career before she had a lot of plastic surgery um she looked way more masculine and her muscles were bigger and her face looked different she was just more manly she looked definitely like a man dressing as a woman um I'm sorry to say it you know and um and, uh, so we thought, and then I was compelled, I was, I was very into that idea because I was like battling with my sexuality at the time. And I was like, oh my God, this woman makes me feel confident in being a woman and confident in being a man. And I related to that thing. And, um, and it, I wondered a long time, my whole life, if China was a man or a woman, but it didn't matter to me because I loved that about her. I was like, she could be a man or a woman and she's still amazing. And she can be a man and a woman and it's still amazing. Um, and, um, and then, so I grew up with China. I followed her career my entire life. Um, so that was the first time I heard about her about 97, 98, probably maybe 99 time frame. You know, I'm, I'm seven, eight years, nine years old. And, um, and then she left the WWE and then just where technology was at, I still follow the WWE just for the record. Some of my favorites were, um, Molly Holly, um, Tori Wilson, those were my two favorites. Um, I didn't really get on board with like Trish or Stacy or Jazz or Jacqueline or Nydia. These are like some of like, I did like Victoria quite a bit. I really do. I follow her on Instagram. I still love Lisa Varen. She's a great, she's great. Ivory, um, you know, so those were some of the big ones during my time of growing up with wrestling. And then, um, when Molly Hall, that when Molly Holly left the WWE, it was over. I was like, no more wrestling. I was like, fuck this. I was like, I, just, I maybe tried to watch it just a few times and I just like, I couldn't, I just didn't like it. Nora and I have written, um, back and forth before. Nora is Molly, um, her real name. And we've, I've sent her fan mail and she mails back. She is so, she is so good. She's on my wish list of meeting people. She's so beautiful. She's so nice. She's so inspiring. Um, she's really good friends with Ivory. Um, and then so, um, so then China kind of goes through this time where she's on reality television and trying to make it in mainstream Hollywood. And, um, I followed her on every, I, cause by around the time that Molly was getting off the, and stuff, she was kind of like my little sub fan. I was like sub of like a fan of her. And then, but, and then China was kind of like, I was following her on the internet. So I was like, I saw that she was on, she was on surreal life. She did the sex tape. She did surreal life again. I think she did a, she did a few re VH1 reality shows and she was at, different things. And I followed what was happening in her career. And, um, she was a fucking mess and that's okay because China was still endearing to me. And I was just like, forgive. I was like, she's, she's just like, it was entertaining and it was, it was compassion and love for like someone you're like, Oh, she's just like, you know, this is just how, what she's going through. And it's, it's hard. I see now I didn't as a child, but I see now that like, that must be so hard going through that as that being your life and as an individual. And then, um, technology continued to progress. And like, I just like, I, um, she moved to Japan and, um, actually I'll skip back to before, right before she moved to Japan in 2012, I think it was, um, I saw her at Venice beach boardwalk. Um, she was walking a dog and she had a man with her and he had a dog. I think there was three dogs. Um, but I was like, I walked by her and I was like, holy fuck, that was China. And I was like, holy fuck, no. 
And I was like, no fucking way. And then I turned back around, and before I know it, there were nine people lined up to talk to her. And I was like, oh my god, I don't want to be the tenth person. Like, I feel so bad. Like, I'm so bad at meeting celebrities. Well, I'm not anymore. But I was then, and I was really uncomfortable with, like, making pe- like people wait through that line. And just, like, how it would feel for me if they were just, like, not comfortable wanting to talk to me and me express all my love for them. And, um... Yeah, and uh, so I turned around and I left. I saw her that day, and then she moved, right after that, she moved to Japan. And um, now, when she moved to Japan, China, like, I, she started a YouTube channel, and she started talking about her experience in Japan, what she was going through. She had made lots of videos. Um, she was really engaging. I loved watching her videos. I watched her videos religiously, and um, I, follow, I was following her online, and I had, um, for me... A, a, a handful of interactions that made me so delighted with her where she would direct mess I direct message her and she would write me back and she was so so nice and um I felt so lucky to have it I never got to tell her about the Venice Beach thing but like we um I you know I could look through my messages and see what they said probably just me telling her how much I admired her and she, her just being great um just be coming from a place of gratitude and so she was always so grateful for her fans and she loved us so much and she made us feel it. She gave us her attention. When she gave us her attention, like, that was where she was at. And I really appreciate that about her. And then um, she comes back from Japan, which I was, like, floored suddenly. And she's going to do a DVD. She's going to do the release of this of documentary that she wants to do, which I I donated to the GoFundMe. Um, I planned on going to a premiere. I, like, I, you know... I, they had all of these like things for you know to encourage people to donate and um, I donated and um, and then I as she's doing all the press and she's like creating the story for her documentary which we don't really know at the time um, we just know some elements she's doing meet and greets all over the United States like she's doing just like events 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 so she had two back to back events of two in two thousand sixteen. And one was, um, I think that she was the, she made, there there was probably another wrestler, but she was like the wrestler. And it was at this just like, um, what was the place? It was a collectibles place. It was a rest, it was a pro sports or wrestling collectibles place. And they had all kinds of, it was like a flea market of just collectibles, like just, um, dolls and gear and all kinds of stuff and it was like a it was a maze of all this stuff and then in the middle of it there was a meet and greet and um so I bought my China meet and greet I paid for um they sold a picture and they sold an autograph separately or you could get them together for a certain price and I paid for both of them together and I got there and I'm having I'm coming I was having the worst I was having not a good day it was it was so freaking hot it was the middle of the summer I think it was June or July and, um, I, uh, June or July, I, it was, I'm going to say June. It's the middle of fucking June. It's hundred and it's east past downtown LA, like towards the desert. It was like, uh, uh, something city. Oh, what is it called? Oh, so, but it was, like, in a weird place I've never been, and I was, like, oh, my God. And then, so, I get there. I'm, I'm hot as hell. I'm dressed nice because I'm, like, hello, I'm taking a picture with China. I'm meeting China. She is my icon, you know. Like, I grew up with this woman. She didn't, like, inspire me to change. She inspired me to live, you know. I, like, I was, like, so attached to what happened. And, um, and, um, so... The first line is for pictures. So you you get through, you get your picture, and then you get back in line, and then you get your um, autograph. And you can't do them at once. Like most meet and greets I've been to, you take a thing, you take a picture, you're over. The line, I was like, I was actually kind of just like so excited and inspired that this many people still love China like me. I was like, the line was so fucking long to meet for the picture with China. I was like, holy fuck. And I'm sweating my ass off. So I get through the line and I meet China. And like I said, she is so, like she was online. I didn't even mention Twitter. I'm sure she talks to other people on Twitter. I wasn't special. But in the, when she's talking to you, she is, she was so engaged. She gave you her time. I noticed before I got up there that she was like talky. She was chatty as fuck. And she was like letting everyone have like a whole couple minutes up there and I was like oh this line is moving so slow but 
when I got through that line, I was so grateful to have that couple minutes with her. She was so beautiful and just so different than all of these things I mattered. She was so reg she was so regular, you know? She was wearing no makeup. She was just beautiful. She was nice. She was exact. She was personable. She was how she came across in her videos. I talked to her about how much I loved her videos in Japan and how it got me through and it gave me something to look forward to and how I didn't understand how she put tomatoes in her smoothies. I was like, that sounds like a juice. That is like weird to me. And like, I feel like I should be having a VA. And she's like, oh no, you have to put your tomatoes in your juice. And just like, I was going back and forth in her laugh. And um, I... I'm so happy and grateful for that experience. I just took the picture. I brought my Playboy, not the Playboy. I I um I brought my book for her to sign, which I regret that I didn't get back in that line for her to sign it. Um and then um so I went home that day and 2 weeks later I think it was is she was doing another meet and greet somewhere really really um really close. And I intended to go to that. I think I bought, I think I even had bought my tickets to go to it. And I just, you know, I, I didn't go. And, um, and then a couple months later, I would, that would become one of the biggest regrets of my, like, my adult life. I regret not going to that meet and greet so much because of whatever I was going through in life. I felt so unhappy and I felt sad and I felt like I didn't like I just met her and I didn't want to go through that whole experience I wanted to meet her but I didn't want to go through all the other bullshit and um and then I was sitting at boy uh, I was sitting at boy I was sitting at dinner with my boyfriend um in April on April 20th which is one of my best friend's birthdays and I remember I was looking at my phone and my friend Jay texts me and he says oh my god did you hear what happened to China I'm so sorry and I just was like, what? And then there it was. They found China dead in her apartment. And um, I was like, that was, my mom has died. And I did not react to China dying. Like I reacted to my mom. When my mom died, I was like, okay. I'm going to work up this emotion because I know it's there. And when I, I ran outside and I started forcing tears out. And I just like was like. It was different. When China died, I immediately, I just, I fucking jumped up from the table at the restaurant I was at and I just ran into the bathroom and I just started bawling. My boyfriend was like, what happened? How you would think that you, if someone, if you found out that your mom, mom it would be opposite. You know, China was a mom for us all, really. You know, we, she was someone that we loved and endeared so much. And um, anyways, uh, so I was deeply upset took them months to get her her um her memorial together and then I got I got my ticket to that I think that there were a couple hundred people maybe like 500 people were there um they rented out this venue and um it was great it was really really great it was so beautiful and they did a great job and there are moments from that that I will remember forever but um um Basically now it's like, so let's get China into the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Everyone, like, we need to just like get that going back. Like, just do it. If you're, if you think that she should be inducted, which everybody who knows wrestling thinks that she should be inducted. It's like, let's just do it. Like, like, let's get China in there. You know, there's some girl that's going to be inducted. Trish Stratus, um, uh, Lisa, like all uh, Ivory, uh, Lisa Varen, Lisa Moretti. Like they don't, they're not. China, you know, um, not the cat, who was the other one, the cat worked with China, but anyways, like, there are a million girls, they will have their time, China is the woman, and, um, I just wanted to say that, like, I'm so excited for her, I know her, um, her documentary that she was working on is gonna, be, has already gained, you know what, maybe that will be her, that will be her, her thing, you know, that's how she's gonna be remembered, not by being inducted to the Hall of Fame, but something that she was a part of. And this documentary, I'm so grateful for, um, I can't remember his first name, but Granga, um, who's working on this DVD with, for her is, and like, it was supposed to come out this year, this fall, and now he's postponing it to it for about another year. And you know what? Um, I, 
I want him to do it right. And um, I cherish his experience in portraying it to us and what happened. And it's going to have a completely different vibe. And it's gaining lots of momentum in Hollywood. People are talking about, like, this is going to be one of the best documentaries. And just, like, and she deserves that acknowledgement. She, is, she was an amazing woman. I'm so grateful I got to meet her. I hope her documentary does well. And I hope she gets inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Not that it even fucking matters. Because she's still amazing. And China. With all of your pictures on my wall, I'm so grateful that you inspired me that way. And you will inspire people forever. Thanks for watching. And <laughs> I know it's been a long one, but it just, like, displays my passion. You know, China, you're awesome.